Hello and welcome back to the best video game news show on the planet, The News You Missed. This show seeks to recap all the big happenings in video game news that you might have missed. Get you caught up. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about the origins of Pokeballs and how they work. We got some Nintendo Switch news, specifically for the expansion pack. And we're also going to be talking about how Phil Spencer doesn't care about the console wars and how terrible NFTs are going for Ubisoft. If that all sounds good to you, let's jump right in. As always, I just wanted to start the episode by thanking all of my subscribers and fans out there for watching these videos. So I want to jump right into the news. I want to begin with, there's a new distribution that has been announced. There's codes for five color statues, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. They'll be given out December 18th, which basically gives you these cool statues to look at. I'm not really a fan of the statues. I mean, they're just trophies, and if you just get them for free in an event, they just sit there and do nothing. Very similar to Pokemon without perfect EV stats for those playing competitive. They just sit in the PC and do nothing. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. We all know they are released out into the wild to die. We're going to continue forward and we're going to talk about how Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl has sold 6 million units globally in its first week, which is really, really great for Pokemon itself. You guys might not like the games. You might not like the art direction and a lot of the other things, but Legends of Arceus is going to come out and I assure you that game's looking really, really good. And I think a lot of people will really enjoy it so this is only good news for pokemon fans despite what a lot of fans might say about the games also speaking of legends of arceus we have the uh regional variant voltorb which looks pretty cool i i like it a lot it looks more like a wooden dowel than an actual uh electrode uh, voltorb type of thing i think it looks cool it's a cool design pokemon origins according to the official pokemon book published in 1996 the modern Pokeball was designed around 1925 after an aging scientist accidentally overdosed a primate. So it was a huge scientific breakthrough. Basically what they said is that primate curled into a fetus position and was in a cabinet, which gave them the idea that they could drain the energy of the Pokemon and get them to fit into a compact ball. Now a primate is much bigger than a Pokeball, so I'm not exactly sure how they figured it out, but like I said, I've had a lot of theories on this and if Pokemon are just energy they were able to figure it out trap them in a ball and there you go Super Mario All-Stars is now available on the Nintendo Switch Online if you happen to have just the Nintendo Switch Online this is Super Nintendo game so you don't need the expansion pack fantastic game I might add it's four games in one it comes with Super Mario Brothers Super Mario Brothers 2 the Lost Levels which is actually Super Mario Brothers 2 then you have the variant for America where uh, Mario and all of his friends pick up vegetables and throw them at enemies for whatever reason, which is Doki Doki Panic, reskinned with Mario. And then finally, Super Mario Bros. 3, a fantastic rendition of the series. It's not just the NES games ported, but it's actually upscaled, graphically speaking, and redone with all sorts of new sprites and graphics. It's awesome, it's fantastic, and I highly recommend it. Speaking of the expansion service, Paper Mario came out, which is another fantastic game, and I strongly urge everybody to play it. If you've never played a Mario RPG of sorts, if you've never played Super Mario RPG or Paper Mario, Paper Mario for the 64 is a great place, a great entry point to get into the series. It's awesome. It's very classic for Super Mario Brothers, and it doesn't have a lot of exterior things entering in. So I think you guys will enjoy uh, that game a lot, especially if you're into Super Mario or RPGs. Also, it's been announced that Banjo-Kazooie is coming to the Nintendo Switch Online service, so we you guys will be able to play that game and if i'm a betting man i believe two will also come as well so yeah there you go for those who have nintendo switch online's expansion pack as well nintendo is also planning major office expansions for more in-house development so that's something i mean there's not much else to say about that but that's good if you're a big nintendo fan uh, more is better safe to say these caves are not natural formations so we have a very cool minecraft uh, master chief 
Eve mashup pack, probably because of the launch of Halo that they decided to put this out. So if you're into Minecraft, make sure to check into that. They, the pack itself looks really, really good. And they made a terrible joke. We're digging the Master Chief's new look. Ha ha ha, Minecraft, hilarious. Warning, do not feed your console lasagna, but I'm sure at some point in time, somebody would just do it for the lulz anyways. You can follow on our tweet with hashtag Xbox Garfield sweepstakes for a chance to win a custom Garfield Xbox Series S in celebration of the Nick Brawl game. If you didn't know Garfield's a playable character, this Xbox looks fantastic, but also is one of the most ugly and unappealing Xboxes I've ever seen in my life. This would never match with anyone's decor. Not like other ones wouldn't match either. For example, the Mountain Dew Xbox is like bright lime green, like obviously that wouldn't match. But my point being like an orange Garfield Xbox is 100% not going to match the decor. Uh, but still, nevertheless, whoever wins this will likely be able to sell it for a lot of money because it's a very limited edition special Xbox. The gears are turning, drop in as Marcus and Kate in the Fortnite game. So that's nice. I appreciate that they, they call Fortnite the Fortnite game on Twitter. That's cool. Good for you guys. So there's a new cross promotion with Xbox and Fortnite and you can drop in as Marcus and Kate. That's from Gears of War. That's pretty cool. I'm glad that they're adding characters still from other game franchises. And the Xbox boss, Bill Spencer, said he spends zero energy on console wars. He's more interested in growing the pie of gaming. And I appreciate that because that's great, man. That's what the presidents need. I, I understand that it's a competitive market, uh, but basically you have PlayStation 5 and Xbox on one side, Nintendo doing its own thing over here, and that's the console wars in a nutshell. Then you have PC users laughing and emulating, and uh, yeah, that that's it. You don't really even need a PlayStation 5 anymore because all the exclusives are coming to the PC and you have a Nintendo Switch, you can pretty much cover all the consoles because you can get Game Pass on PC and you can play some PlayStation games on PC as well and they're coming to Steam so you don't even need like PlayStation Plus, you don't even need the cloud or anything like that. Console Wars are all but dead except for those whiny bitches who cry about which console is better. Either invest in one or get all three and get over it. I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, it's just video games. So Alan Wake 2 has been announced. Looks pretty cool. I was really into Alan Wake. Really enjoyed it. It was a game about a writer who was writing a book and suddenly his book was coming to life in certain forms, shapes, and uh, yeah, if you guys have never played Alan Wake the original, I strongly suggest that you check it out. It's coming in 2023 to PC on the Epic Game Store, as well as the PlayStation 5 and Xbox X S series, so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to keep up with that. Insomniac Games has said that patching the PS4 game has become more technically complex each time, especially when maintaining the PS4 HDD streaming performance, and so they made the a PS5 exclusive. So long story short, if you want new content for the Spider-Man game, you will have to buy a PlayStation 5. We have all the Game Award announcements here, ladies and gentlemen. I picked up on most of the major ones, so we're gonna have a nice bonus round. Ready? Let's go. Metroid Dread is one best action adventure. We also have Halo Infinite, the winner of the Player's Voice Award. Players voted for that. Forza Horizon 5 wins the award for innovation and accessibility. It it Takes Two won the Game of the Year, and that wraps up the major winning nominations for the Game Awards. If I missed one and you wanted me to cover it, feel free to put it in the comments down below. A lot of people were upset that Metroid Dread didn't win Game of the Year, and I understand that, but if we set our expectations a little bit more realistically, a lot of the entries had multiple platforms, and Metroid Dread just had Nintendo Switch, which is why I honestly think it didn't receive as many votes and didn't win Game of the Year. But it did win best action adventure game of the year so that's fantastic and more exposure to Metroid is massively important. I wanted to close on this uh, Ubisoft has now delisted the announcement video for Quartz NFT platform after it received more than 95% of dislikes on YouTube. Now I don't really understand exactly how this platform was going to work but basically what they summarized it up as is saying that if you play a certain amount of time you'll unlock these NFTs which are supposed to be very unique and only to you. That 
that means you can't have another one out there. But when they, they tried to explain it, they, they showed that anybody could get these NFTs as long as they played enough. For example, there's this mask that you can get and you have to play 600 hours of Ghost Recon to get the mask. Now, I'm not saying that it's an awful idea to provide unlocks with a game for playing it for a certain amount of time. I'm only saying that I don't understand how it's an NFT if everyone around the world can get it as long as they put 600 hours into the game. It doesn't really make sense to me. Basically, it's a piece of art and some people can view this art as very, very valuable or worthless. And that's the basic principle behind NFTs. There's a lot more to it, but that's as simply as I can put it for you. Ubisoft's Quartz platform is trying to push the notion and the idea that if you play more games, you'll get these NFTs for free. While it would be cool that I could earn Bitcoins by playing a video game, I doubt that it's going to be anything like that in the future. But hey, I might be pleasantly surprised. And that'll do it for your weekly recap. I invite you guys to like and subscribe. Make sure to share this video, let other people know that I'm still around and trying to inform people of the news. Join the Maverick Rebellion today. You don't have to be informed by all of these news agencies. You don't have to click all of those article links and get clickbaited. You can just get the news from me on your daily drive into work. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. And as always, good gaming. God bless. And I'll see you later.